Hi everybody, welcome to a grimdark future battle report. Human Defense Force versus High Elf Fleets. The Human Defense Force has not been able to maintain operations or defend any of their interests in the Legatus sector. In some circles, the HDF is considered more or less a joke. Retired Commander Absalom Corvin, codename Space Fox, has decided to change that. He has come out of retirement to lead the HDF into glory and more respect. His first target is a former proud city on the planet Sekora. The city is in ruins and almost hidden in a wild growing alien vegetation. A high elf fleet force is already there, normally not the enemy of the HDF, but still in the way of the space fox. The leader of the Human Defense Force is the Space Fox Absalom Corvin. He is a storm leader. He has Strider, armed with a Master Plasma Pistol and Energy Fist, and then he's an Enforcer. He's joined with a unit of Stormtroopers. They are armed with one Flamer, two Sniper Rifles, one Heavy Pistol, and one Heavy Rifle. And they all have medical training. Then we have two Veteran Squads. They are identical. Three armed with Rifles, one armed with plasma rifle and one with energy sword and plasma pistol. And then they have five demo charges and they can only use them once. There is also a group of snipers with stealth and sniper rifles and finally a battle tank. It's fast, has impact six, a tough value of 12 and the battle tank is armed with a battle cannon, a heavy flamer and a twin heavy machine gun. The leader of the High Elf fleets is an Elden Noble, fast, and armed with Master Shard Pistol, Dire Sword and also a Shield Projector that will supply stealth. Then we have two groups of protectors. One of the groups is armed with Shard Guns and a Shatter Cannon. The other group is armed with Shard Guns and joined to an Elite Protector. The Elite Protector is armed with Master Shot Pistol, Energy Sword and Shield Projector and all of them are fast. The High Elf Fleet Forces have also brought a group of Elemental Protectors. They are fearless, they have Relentless, a tough value of 3 and they are armed with Wraith Cannons. They are not fast though. Finally, a combat walker, and it's fast, a tough value of 6, it's armed with stomp, 2 burst lasers and 1 rapid shard cannon, and it's equipped with a hologram field that gives stealth. The space fox and his forces will approach from the upper left corner of the battlefield, close to the center of the city. The high elf fleets will approach from the lower right corner of the city. Their main concern will, without a doubt, be to take out the battle tank as fast as possible. This is a King of the Hill mission. In the center of the city is the ruins of what used to be a great town square. Now it's left in ruins, broken pillars and alien vegetation. But it's still the main goal of this mission. Whoever controls the town square at the end of round 4 will be the winner. In this battle, the Human Defense Force will roll the black dice. The High Elf Fleets will roll the blue dice. So let's roll off. And it's a win for the HDF. Round 1. Absalom Corbin will command his troops forward. This veteran squad will move to the right side of the battlefield and take cover behind the ruined building. Next up, the elite protector will move himself and his group forward. They will also take cover behind this central wall leading up to the town square. The snipers will activate and they will rush 12 inches they will reach the building and they will also be able to move up to the first floor. From this position they have a really good view of the entire city. And then it's the combat walker. It will advance into the middle of the main street of this once proud city. And from this position it will be able to target the veteran squad here and also the battle tank. 
It will fire burst lasers with a range of 30 inches first, two shots they will hit on threes, and it's a P1. Not a good shot, but the battle tank is of course also mostly behind the building. And the tank has a defense of two, so it will need threes to save. In the end, the battle tank will be hit and take one wound. Next up, the combat walker will fire its rapid charge cannon at the veteran group. It will be able to divide the fire with two different weapons, and it will also hit on threes. It's a better shot. It's AP1 and rending. No rending hits, but the veteran squad will need sixes to block anyway and it does not look good. There is one save, but four veterans will be shot down in the middle of the street by the combat walker's rapid shard cannon. And the remaining squad member must, of course, pass a morale test, and he fails miserably, and who can blame him? His entire squad was just, yeah, wiped out. But now, the battle tank will advance. It's fast, it can move up to 8 inches, it will move out here in the main street, and it will aim the battle cannon. First, it will target the combat walker with twin heavy machine guns, 6 shots, hitting on 4s. It will need 5s though, because of the combat walker's stealth. And it's more than 9 inches away. So 2 hits, no rending hits. It's AP1, the combat walker will save with threes, and it will fail one of the shots, so it will take one hit. The target for the battle cannon is the group of elemental protectors. The cannon has a range of 30 inches and it will hit on a four. So it's one hit, but it has the blast special rule, so it will be three hits, and the elemental protectors with high defense will save two of them, so one hit. The battle tank's flamer is not in firing range. Instead, the elemental protectors will advance to this position, and from here they can target the tank. Nine wraith cannon shots hitting on a three, and it's AP4. The battle tank armor will be almost powerless against the wraith cannon. And in the end we have six hits from the Wraith cannons, and even with the battle tank armor, it will take defense rolls of six. And only one saved. That's five hits. And to the one it already has, that's a total of six. So it is down to half strength at the moment. That will force the tank to take a morale test it will need a roll of four to pass. And it's good. The battle tank will keep fighting. Now, Absalom Corbin and his squad will advance forward, and they are armed with several different weapons. The flamer and the snipers will hit on twos because they are reliable, and the heavy rifle, the regular pistol, and Corbin himself will hit on a roll of four. All of them will target the elemental protectors with their shots. Twos and fours. Let's see what Absalom Corbin can do. And not much. Apparently he will fail his shots. And in the end, only the flamer and one of the snipers will hit the target. The flamer has the blast ability, but the elemental protectors will fail too of the flamer's hits. That means that two of them will take one wound and not one of them will take two, but they will also fail the sniper shot. So in the end, this is correct. One elemental protector is out and one is wounded. The group of protectors with the cannon know that if they take this position on top of this building, they will be very exposed, but it's also a great chance to remove the battle tank. The shatter cannon will fire three shots. It has a range of 36 inches. Two hits and the tank must roll fours and the tank armor will resist the shot. No damage to the tank. And then the lonely veteran here is no longer shaken and finally the elven noble will move forward. It's a cautious move. She's not in any kind of line of sight but she cannot fire anything either. So that was the end of this round. 
the battle tank was under heavy fire, but it resisted everything. The elemental protectors have suffered a loss. So nothing is yet decided. It's round two. The human defense force will activate first and the battle tank will yeah, advance forward right onto the rubbles on the town square. It will capture the king of the hill objective and it will fire immediately. First the battle cannon will target the protectors on top of the building with the cannon. It's an obvious target but it will fail. Next up the heavy flamer will target the same group and this one will hit and the protectors will fail their defense rolls. They will go down in flames, leaving only one protector and the cannon. So next up, the tank will target the elemental protectors with the twin heavy machine gun. And there will be three AP-1 hits. The elemental protectors will have to defend with a roll of four or more. And two of them are not good that will take down another elemental protector with two wounds that will give him three and he's out now to morale checks the protectors are shaken and the elemental protector he will need a three and he will fail and he will also fail his fearless morale reroll he's also shaken the battle tank made a mess but now it's a target for the combat walker. First a rapid shard cannon and it will hit on a roll of three with six shots. There will be three shots but two of them are rending. So let's begin with the normal shot that will take a roll of three and the battle tank will fail this time. So that's one additional wound taking it to seven. Now the rending hits the tank must roll six and again it's no good. And the combat walker will continue firing. This time the burst lasers and all the way to the snipers in the building. The burst lasers have a range of 30 inches. And they have stealth. So the combat walker will need force to hit, but it still looks good. Five AP-1 hits, but the AP-1 will be negated by the cover, so the snipers will need a roll of five. Still very tricky. They will save a couple of them, but that will unfortunately not be enough. From a very long distance, and despite stealth and cover, the combat walker will take out the snipers. The battle tank will yet again pass the morale test. It's still operational. Down this street of the city. The veteran squad will charge. They will charge the protectors and they will use four of their demo charges. They can only use them once. And then we have two energy sword attacks. All of them will hit on four. At least two demo charges will hit and one energy sword as well. The demo charges has a high AP of four. The energy sword with one. No matter what, they will need sixes and they will not roll any of those so three protectors will be killed by this attack so that will leave two protectors and one elite protector they fight back with two close combat attacks and two energy sword attacks only one of them will hit and that hit is not blocked one veteran will leave but the veterans clearly won the battle so it will force the protectors to take a morale test and they are down to half strength and they will fail so they will immediately leave the battlefield in screaming panic the remaining elemental protector is frozen in fear he can do nothing but get out of his shaken condition and that will lead the initiative to absalom corbin and his squad Corbin and the rifleman and the soldier with the gun will attack the combat walker. Two hits this time. The regular rifle hit will be defended with a roll of three. The combat walker has a high 
a very tough defense of two, but it will need a six to block Corbin's plasma gun hit, and it fails, so one additional wound to the combat walker. The rest of the group, with the sniper, rifles, and the flamer, will target the elemental protector, and they will all hit. That will force the elemental protector first to make a save on the flamer hit, Next up, rolls of four to block the sniper hits, and it will fail one of them, so it will take a wound. And it's still forced to make a morale test. It's way below half strength, this unit, but this time it will stand strong. Finally, the elven noble will move to the corner of this wall. And armed with a master shot pistol, it's a long shot, but it will target the tank. And there are two hits, but it's AP nothing. The tank will only need rolls of two, but if it fails, it's forced to make a morale test, but it will yet again save everything. So finally, the veteran from the almost eradicated veteran squad will progress along the battlefield. And as the last activation, the group of protectors with the cannon will move out of the shaken condition, and that will conclude round number two. The battle tank has claimed the objective, and the HDF are looking good at the moment. But the combat walker is still not damaged that much. We'll see what happens in the third round. Again, the HDF will activate first, and again, they will use the battle tank. The tank will split the shots between two targets and begin with a heavy flamer shot at the protector squad on top of the building. And there will be two hits, and one of them will not be defended, and another defender will leave, only the cannon is remaining. So the rest of the shots now will be meant to hit the combat walker, the twin heavy machine gun first. We are looking for fours. Three AP1 hits, the combat walker must roll. Three, and there will be two hits. So further wounds to the combat walker. And finally the battle tank will fire the battle cannon, two shots. It has blast, but that will not really help against the combat walker, but let's see what kind of damage. And there are two hits, and it's AP2 this time. The combat walker must roll fours. And there is one good roll, luckily, for the combat walker. If it had failed both of them, it would have been destroyed. Now it has five out of six wounds, and it will force the combat walker to roll a morale test. And it's good but heavily damaged. The cannon protector, of course, also will have to pass a morale test. And we'll just re-roll that one. No, he is no good. He was shaken just a moment ago, then he got himself together. Now he's back to shaken. I guess the plan was to eliminate the combat walker, but that didn't happen. So now the combat walker activates it contests the objective in the middle of the battlefield and fires against the tank and the stormtroopers. Six cannon shots against the tank. And with rolls of three to hit, it looks really bad for the tank. Two of the hits are rending. The tank must roll sixes and it will block one of them but take another wound. Still not enough to eliminate the tank, but it's very close now, and it still needs to save four additional cannon hits. And it will save them all except for one. So that is 11 wounds out of 12. And again, a morale test, but it will pass. The tank is still standing, it's a miracle. Now the Space Fox and his Stormtroopers will face burst laser shots, six of them, also hitting on a roll of three. Three hits, 
The Stormtroopers must block with rolls of 5. They have a tougher defense than the veterans, and they will block one of them. But they do also have medical training, so they have a regeneration roll, and that will save yet another wound. So, in the end, one Stormtrooper. Let's take the guy with the banner and the pistol. He's out. But there is no time to take care of the wounded. Corbin will advance with his squad of Stormtroopers, and they will target the last elemental protector first. One flamer and two sniper shots. All of them will hit on a roll of two, and they are all on target. The elemental protector will first block, or try to block the flamer, and that one is defended. Now the two sniper hits will need rolls of four, and the protector will fail both of them. That's two wounds, and that is enough to take down the final elemental protector. A triumph for Absalom Corvin. But he's not finished yet. He will target the combat walker with the rest of the shots. And none of them will hit. Only one hit was needed to defeat the combat walker. But that did not happen. Again, the elven noble will target the tank. One hit will also destroy the tank. And there is one hit. But again, only a roll of two is needed. And... No doubt, the battle tank armor is still very much intact. The veteran squad will advance closer to the High Elf fleet forces and they will also split their shots. Two plasma shots against the combat walker. They will hit on four and one of them will hit. So now the combat walker is in trouble. A roll of six is needed. And no, finally, the combat walker will be destroyed and no longer contest the objective. Then two rifle shots against the protector with the cannon on the roof. They will not hit. He's still alive. And now he's no longer shaken. The lonely veteran with the energy sword has been sneaking around the battlefield for long. Now he is close enough to charge the elven noble. He will attack twice with his energy sword and he will hit with both of them. And it's AP 1, so that will take rolls of 5. One of them is good, but the elven noble will take one wound. And now, of course, fight back. The Elven Noble fights with a Dire Sword with Blast, but Blast does not really help here. But there is one hit, and it's AP nothing, and that's a failed defense roll for the last standing veteran. He will move back and go down. The Human Defense Force controls the central objective. And the combat walker is no longer around. Let's see what happens in the fourth and final round. This time the few remaining high elf fleet forces have the advantage of the first activation. And they will begin with the shatter cannon targeting the tank. Three shots, they will hit on fours. Two hits. And they are AP2. Could this be the end of the battle tank? Defense rolls of 4. And if one of them fails. And it's a failed defense roll. Finally, the battle tank will take the last wound. And explode right in the middle of the battlefield. And it will of course no longer be able to claim the objective. Now could be a good time to try to cut the head of the snake. The veteran squad will move behind the wall and have a clear line of sight to the elven noble. Two plasma shots, two rifle shots, they will hit on fours. So there are two hits, one of each, that will potentially take down the elven noble. No, one good save. But what about the plasma hit? No. So that's an additional wound. Two wounds now to the elven noble. And she is forced to make a morale test. That will take a roll of three or more. And it's good. So the Elven Noble can now activate 
She is the last remaining unit. And she will choose to turn around and charge the veterans with the dire sword. A roll of three, and unfortunately, it's not a hit. Now, the veterans can fight back with close combat weapons and two attacks with energy sword. And there will be two close combat attacks and one energy sword hit. That looks tough for the elven noble to get out of this one. So first, the regular close combat attacks. She will defend both of those, but what about the energy sword? That will take a roll of six, and she's not able to withstand the power of the energy sword hit. The elven noble will go down in honor. Absalom Corbin and his stormtroopers all have strider, so they will easily climb the ruins of the town square and claim the objective. And they will also be able to shoot at the last remaining protector. One plasma hit and one failed defense roll, and this battle is over. Absalom Corbin, the Space Fox, came out of retirement to make the Human Defense Force a force to be reckoned with and to earn the respect they deserve. Literally nothing or no one will stand in his way. He has claimed this city, captured the objective, and now he's looking for new missions. Thanks a lot for watching this battle report. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I hope you'll join me for future bad reps.